Bible says that they were. The geography matches. The valleys are next to the cities, which are connected to the hills. And all of this can be traced in very detailed geographic accounts in Scripture. So you find maps in the Bible, why don't you find maps in the Book of Mormon? There's no map showing the Book of Mormon lands because they can't place it on Earth. They don't know where it is. What about all these illustrated maps you see for the Book of Mormon lands? I mean, why don't they agree with one another? And I guess more important than that, why don't they correspond to any real land mass on Earth? You can't have a geography because there is no real world setting for the events described in the Book of Mormon. We can't agree upon it because any time we attempt to try to put it in a real world setting, we have to distort either that real world setting or the text itself. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints takes no official position on the geography of the Book of Mormon. One of the reasons for this is obvious, is that the events never took place anywhere. The Jews still exist today, both in the countries to which they were exiled and in the land of Israel. All of the civilizations surrounding Palestine have also been well established through archaeology and history. Israel is a bridge of three continents. So we had the Egyptian coming here, the Assyrian coming here, the Babylonian coming here, the Hellenist Empire, the Roman. It's very evident when you read the Bible that uh, they're really talking about historical places. How do you know that the Roman Empire existed? The Romans left marks everywhere they went. They left large roads, they left coins, uh, and they left written records. The remains of the ancient Greek and Roman empires, which are written about in the Bible, are clearly visible throughout the Old World. Likewise, the Book of Mormon also records the existence of empires in the New World. We get the Jaredite civilization in the Book of Ether, a promise that they will become the greatest nation in the world. Uh, this greatest nation on earth, we find no traces of it. The dates found in the footnotes of the Book of Mormon indicate that the Jaredite Empire was replaced by the Nephite Empire shortly after 600 BC. In the Book of Mormon you've got this large civilization of Nephites who were industrious people who built machines, lived in large cities. I, I don't know of any evidence that the Nephites ever existed in the Americas. The civilizations we find uh, throughout Central America tended to peak, find their great climax uh, between 600 and, and 900 AD, well after the events described in the Book of Mormon. The Lamanites are said to have annihilated the Nephite Empire around 400 AD. So of the three people groups mentioned in the Book of Mormon, the Lamanites are the only ones that survived, becoming, according to the Book of Mormon, the principal ancestors of Native Americans. Now here at the Hill Cremora, we have this plaque that specifically lists us as Lamanites. It's written to the Lamanites, who are a remnant of the House of Israel, that's listing us as being specifically written to in the Book of Mormon. No se ha encontrado ninguna evidencia de una cultura procedente del territorio de Israel llamada Lamanitas o Nifitas. No hay ninguna evidencia. The Bible also contains accounts of people groups that no longer exist today, such as the Canaanites and the Philistines. But are these people groups missing from the archaeological record? Uh, we know a lot about the Canaanite civilization through Egyptian sources as well as through uh, many, many archaeological sites excavated in this country where we have the uh, Canaanite civilization uh, uh, reflected. Archaeologically, have the Philistines been shown to have existed? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, the Philistines have their own distinct material culture which we can tell apart from other cultures that lived here. This begs the question, could the three enormous empires that are said to have flourished in the Americas for centuries leave no archaeological trace of themselves? So would it be possible, say, in the Americas um, for an empire to exist 
there and leave no archaeology? No, it's impossible. No, it's impossible. We say that archaeology never lie. If there were people at a certain place, they left behind them many artifacts. We do not have such a uh, situation in which uh, a, uh, a certain power would be destroyed without leaving any evidence. They leave their tombs, they leave the remnants of their houses, they leave their temples, they leave the foundations, and they leave the destruction. Permanent settlements, all of them, are well known and agreed upon by scholars in Israel today. Places like Hatzor and Megiddo and Jerusalem and Shiloh and Arad and Beersheba and Jericho, many of these are still inhabited until today. And they may be ruins. Jesus condemned these sites of Capernaum and Bethsaida and Chorazin, but there's no doubt scholars know that these were real places that existed in his time and the evidence for them is is certain. All these places that are still called by the same name, how is that possible? Because for thousands of years there's been a continuous settlement. The local peoples have passed on the names from generation to generation. Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Elat, those are biblical names. We keep them for more than 3,000 years. The fortified cities written about in the Book of Mormon have names such as Nephi, Manti, Zarahemla, Sidon, Jershon, and Bountiful, to name just a few of the more than 30 major cities mentioned in the Book of Mormon. Because of the development of the uh, epigraphy, uh, we now are able to read you know, the ancient names of most of the, of the sites. You ever heard of names in, um, like Zarahemla? No or Nephi. A good friend once asked me, what sort of evidence would it take to convince you that the Book of Mormon was an ancient document? Right? And my response to him was, it'd be nice if we could even find cities that are similar to the ones described in the Book of Mormon. There, there is no evidence uh, as far as uh, where Zarahemla is, which is one of the big cities that's men mentioned in the in the Book of Mormon. Here we are standing in Palenque today. The buildings that we see in front of us were in fact constructed several centuries after the events described in the Book of Mormon. So this could not possibly have been a Nephite city. If a city existed like this, a, a big city, is it possible that there would be no archaeological evidence left at all? No. It's impossible. In a, in a city like Tiberias, there is plenty of evidence, like architecture, floors, small finds, objects, coins, you name it, everything. Could a major city be conquered and not leave any, any of that evidence? No way. By no means. Years ago, I was engaged in a conversation with a Christian friend. One of the things he told me is that if I wanted to go to Jerusalem, it was easy to do, still today. I could visit Bethlehem, and I, I could uh, see the places where the events described in the New Testament took place. But have I ever been or heard of anyone going to Zarahemla or to Bountiful 